Good evening. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. So very glad that you've come out this evening to hear the Maranatha Baptist University Heritage Singers. I got to meet them a little bit before the uh, service, ate some supper with them, and a good group of young people. I'm thankful that they've driven all the way over from the great state of Wisconsin to be here this evening, and uh, looking forward to a blessing. Whether this is your first time here at Calvary Baptist Church or whether you've been here for many, many years, I think you'll find that this evening will be a blessing. And I do want to say, I don't want to steal anybody from their church home, but if you don't have a good good church home, a good church family, uh, Calvary Baptist Church is a great church, great church family, and I, I know you'll feel warm welcome here. And so if you uh, are interested in, about the church, Feel free to talk to me after the service, but uh, so glad you came this evening to hear an evening of music. At this time, I'll ask you to stand. We'll ask the Lord's blessing on our time together, and then we'll ask the group uh, to, to go ahead and begin. And I do want to mention here at the beginning, about halfway through, we will be taking an offering for the university, and so if you're not prepared to give this evening, that's all right, but if the Lord lays it on your heart to give, and all the monies that will be taken through that offering will go to uh, Maranatha Baptist University. I appreciate what the university does. I'm a graduate of Maranatha uh, Baptist. It was Maranatha Baptist Bible College when I went through with my undergrad. And then as I uh, finished my master's degree, it was Maranatha Baptist University. I appreciate the, the school and what they're doing, training servants uh, for the glory of God there. And, and so the monies that you would give this evening will go to the furtherance of Maranatha Baptist University. Let's ask the Lord's blessing on our time this evening. Father, thank you for this great group of young people that you brought here this evening. Father, thank you for their servant's heart and their ministry coming to minister in song. Father, we ask that you would be glorified through everything this evening. Would our hearts be drawn to you, be tuned to you. Father, right now I do want to pause and ask for your hand to be upon uh, Mark Smith this evening as he's just going through a tremendous amount of pain. Father, would you uh, just heal him, help that pain to subside? Would you give the doctors wisdom to know what's going on there in his physical body? And, and we'll thank you for what you'll do. Father, once again, we ask for your blessing on this evening. Thank you for all the folks that have come out tonight. Would you have your hand a blessing on them as well for being here? We'll give you the glory and praise. We ask this in Christ's name, amen. You may be seated, and I'll ask the group to come on along. Exalt his name above all names, arise and bless the Lord. Arise and bless the Lord your God, may his name be blessed forever. Exalt his name above all names, arise and bless the Lord. Feel your presence, Lord. 
let us know your grace. Help us seek your truth and walk by faith, by faith. Arise and bless the Lord your God. May his name be blessed forever. Exalt his name above all names. Arise and bless the Lord. Arise and bless the Lord your God. May his name be blessed forever. Exalt his name above all names. Arise and bless the Lord. Arise and bless the Lord. Arise and bless. It is our goal as a team that we wouldn't just be performing for you all tonight, but that you would arise and bless the Lord with us in your hearts and worship the Lord with us as we sing this evening. We are the Heritage Singers. We're from Maranatha Baptist University in Watertown, Wisconsin. We're getting close to halfway through about a 12-week tour. Uh, we'll be going up to Canada in a couple weeks, so we appreciate your prayers for uh, traveling safety. Uh, we did want to take a few minutes and introduce ourselves. My name is Joel Montgomery. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which I know can be a dirty word in these parts. <laughs> but my team was asking uh, a couple days ago, why do Pittsburgh and Philadelphia hate each other so much? And there are just way too many reasons. But also, I was just like, Pennsylvania is just two cities that hate each other separated by the Amish, and we don't know why. So... <laughs> But uh, I am from Pittsburgh. My dad is a pastor there. Um, and I just finished my undergraduate degree in music, emphasizing music composition. And this fall, I am going back to Maranatha to study a master's degree in organizational leadership. Hello, I'm from Nova Scotia, Canada. My name is Rayanna Eastridge, and I am a senior studying music education. Hello, I'm from Coon Rapids, Minnesota. My name is Jackson Schoonover, and I'm going to my sophomore year studying pastoral studies. Hello, my name is Philip Holloway. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and I'm going to be going into my junior year studying biblical studies. Hello, I'm going into my senior year studying business. I'm from Peoria, Illinois, and my name is Julia Luthold. Hello, my name is Hannah Ostrander. I am from Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, and I just finished my undergrad in string pedagogy. Hi, my name is Autumn DeLeon. I'm from Watertown, Wisconsin, and I just graduated with my master's in education. Our salvation is a wonderful thing, isn't it? I encourage you, like I encourage myself and the rest of the team, to thank the Lord daily for your salvation. Will you rejoice with us as we sing about the wonderful truth that Jesus saves? joyful sound Jesus saves spreads the tidings all around Jesus saves bear the news to every land climb the steeps and cross the waves onward tis our Lord's command Jesus saves Jesus 
ourselves. Just heard a piece inviting, uh, reminding us of the salvation that Christ offers us. This next piece reminds us of the assurance that we have in Christ. When I was young, I remember praying a prayer, but I didn't understand what salvation was and what that meant to me. I struggled with that until I was in junior high, but I was afraid to step forward and accept salvation. All these years, people had thought I was saved, and I was afraid of what they might think. But then I realized what Christ has sacrificed and what he has done for me, and that my surety is found in him, and that I can draw near to him because of the confidence that I have in him. The sacrifice that Christ made for us not only provides us salvation and a surety in our salvation, but it also gives us a new purpose in life. And that new purpose is to glorify God by telling others about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans 12:1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Because of the ultimate sacrifice that Christ made for us, it only makes sense that we give our lives back to him as a living sacrifice. Yeah. 
his own righteousness and all I choose to keep or give away is for the glory of the one who rules and reigns for Christ the God man laid everything down for me in love he As Christ was servant to his Father, I bow before my King. A life of sacrifice is the offering that I bring. The light of Jesus has opened my eyes to see my greatest treasure, the one who set me free. And all I have, I count it all as loss, compared to knowing Christ and the power of his cross. God has exalted him to the highest, highest praise his name above all names, deserving Let's praise. For he who knew no sin for my sin, and he who knew no shame for my shame, as Christ was servant to his Father, I bow before my King. All I must I'd like to take a minute and tell you a little bit about Maranatha. Maranatha is a Baptist liberal arts university. Now, many of you who are familiar with Maranatha may remember that it used to be Maranatha Baptist Bible College. And the question has been fairly raised, why the switch? Why are we now Maranatha Baptist University? Well, the reason for that comes down to our philosophy of ministry, which is simply that ministry is wherever God has you. There are so many vocations that the Lord desires to use to spread his gospel and to further the cause of Christ. The unfortunate truth is that most high schoolers come out of high school, they graduate, and they believe that either they're going to go to a Bible college because the Lord is calling them to full-time ministry, or they have to go to a state university because they have to get quality training and they can't get quality training from any Christian institutions. The unfortunate truth that goes along with that is that of young people that were raised in the faith and go to a state university, statistics show that over 90% will completely reject the faith by the end of their freshman year. We want to completely fight against that trend. Maranatha strives to provide students with absolute academic excellence in their training, and yet found them in their faith, so that they can go forward in those areas 
whatever the Lord has called them to do and stand strong in their faith as they work in those areas. So that's a little bit of who we are, a little bit of what we stand for. A few things that we have on our back table. This is what we call the Big Scary Blue Book. This is our full catalog. Every major, every minor, every course plan, anything you could possibly want to know about Maranatha's academics and trust me more is in this book. Uh, this is rated number one in Wisconsin for bedtime reading. So if you're looking for something to help you at night, seriously though, if you or someone you know are interested in Maranatha, this is a wonderful resource for you to know exactly what a full uh, course outline would look like for your time at Maranatha. If you are not quite ready to dive full on into the catalog, this is our view book. The view book provides a quick snapshot of the university. A few of the overviews of our programs, some of the current things going on, highly recommend that you start there. We want people to come to campus. There are so many opportunities that you can really only get once in a lifetime by being on campus at a university. However, we understand that that's not doable for everyone, so we have a significant and growing online program. Right now, we are offering a dual enrollment system for high schoolers who are looking to get ahead on college. You can take high school, uh, college level credits for both high school and college credit, and they cost half the price of what they would cost once you get to college. If you start in your junior year of high school, you can have up to your entire first year of college done before you ever step on campus for half the price. So it's a really, really good opportunity. Now some of you are sitting here saying, this has no bearing on my life. I am well past college years. I've been there, I ain't going back. So for you, we found out recently that our oldest graduate of our online programs graduated with a master's degree in Bible at 85 years old, so it's not too late for some of you who are thinking about going back and getting some additional training, but seriously, we would love to talk to you about anything that you would be interested in. For sale back there, we have several different resources. Every year, our Bible faculty choose a theme and often a full book of the Bible to preach through, uh, and at the end of that year, we compile the transcripts of those sermons and put them into book form. This one is called Live as a Pilgrim. It's on 1 Peter. And these would be a great resource to, first of all, know what the exposition, what the preaching, how we teach preaching at Maranatha. But also, these are put together by very scholarly, godly men who put a lot of time into the study of these sermons. These would be a wonderful resource and um, addition to your study of these books or as a gift to someone who you know is going through any of these books. We also have a couple of books by Dr. Larry Oates. Dr. Oates has been a longtime uh, professor at Maranatha since its founding. This one is called To the Praise of His Glory. This details the founding of Maranatha, which I'm sure doesn't exactly sound like a page turner to start with, but in reality, the Maranatha um, had a lot of needed miracles to get off the ground. And this is a wonderful story outlining how the Lord provided to even get Maranatha off the ground. So a wonderful story of God's provision and grace. Finally, Maranatha puts a very high emphasis on producing good, godly Christian art. A few years ago, we started a program of essentially producing one CD every year. This one is called Come to Me. We put this out uh, right after COVID hit, and we wanted to create something that could be of comfort and, show, and point people towards God in those times when many churches were struggling and downhearted. The songs on here talk about who God is and the comfort that we can find in him. Secondly, last year we came out with Beautiful Savior. Beautiful Savior, every song on here talks directly about Christ and who he is and our relationship to him. Finally, we just came out with Answer the Call. Answer the Call is a missions-focused CD. The songs on here talk about the gospel, 
our relationship to the gospel and our duty to spread the gospel. So several of us had the opportunity to be on this CD and several of the songs we are singing tonight are featured on here. Uh, we would love to talk to you at our back table and uh, get to um, show you any of the resources that we have back there after the service. At this time, the team is going to play an offertory. Um, they are playing an arrangement of Ferris Lord Jesus, which can be found on page 255 in your hymnal. I would encourage you to follow along with the lyrics as they play about uh, the glory and beauty of our Savior. All right, have you already been blessed by the music this evening? Amen, it's been a blessing to me. We'll uh, pray for this offering we're about to take, so if you'll go ahead and stand, and then I'll ask the ushers when they're ready to go ahead and make their way to the front, and uh, just let's bow for prayer and ask the Lord's blessing. Heavenly Father, thank you for this group that you've sent to us. Father, thank you how they've already ministered to our hearts and music. Lord, would you just continue to bless them and have your hand a blessing on the college, Father, even as we take this offering this evening, may these monies be used to further train young men and young women and so they would uh, follow you and serve you in whatever, whatever vocation you've called them to. Bless the offering we ask. Bless those who give. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen.
with a chronic autoimmune disease. And often throughout the years, there have been many times at night where I felt like God didn't hear my prayers and that when I prayed to him, God felt very silent and distant. In Isaiah 40, the children of Israel expressed their emotion by saying, is our way hid from God? Does God know what we're going through? And in the following verses, God replies and says, have you not known, have you not heard that I am the everlasting God, the creator? And you might be sitting here tonight going through your own trial and maybe one that no one else knows about. And when God feels silent, we can open God's word and trust the promises that God's word is true and that he will never leave us or forsake us. And in this next song, just listen to the words and know that when trials, when we're going through trials, we can trust God even in the dark. Questions in my mind. Have I fallen from your favor? Is your ear to me inclined? When your silence is unbroken, though my prayer ascends each day.
troubled thoughts within me, hold me wakeful in thy light. And the shadows that surround me seem to hide me from your sight. upon your promise, you will not neglect my cry, my cry, while you wait in gracious wisdom, and my doubts begin to rise, I recall your love and kindness, and let my heart fly us, while your hand withholds the answer. In those times of darkness, it's very easy for us to lose that focus on God. Even if we want to focus on the blessings and the goodness of our Lord, it's so easy to get distracted with the cares and the troubles of this world and fall into the anxiety. Ray is going to play an arrangement of day by day and with each passing moment. And what number was that, Julia? One, it's on 144 in your hymn books, and I would really encourage you to take your hymn book and follow along with the words. This arrangement is a little different than most arrangements of day by day. Most are done in a slightly more upbeat manner, but this arrangement was done for a pastor's family that was struggling and had multiple trials hitting at the same time. And this arrangement walks through the emotions that go along with continuously giving your anxiety to the Lord. We want to give it over and yet still want to hold on. So I would encourage you to follow along and listen to Ray as she plays and dwell and meditate on the goodness of our Lord, how he helps us to give that anxiety over to him in any trial that he gives to us.
that we are able to put in our God often comes because the Lord has already put us through trials and we've learned to trust him through them. This last piece that we're going to sing before the message talks about how wonderful it is to rest in Christ, how to trust in who he is. This is a reworking of the old hymn, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. But instead of talking about Christ, it has been reworked to be a prayer thanking Christ for putting us through those trials so that we could get closer to him and be able to fully put our trust in who he is. such a wonderful truth to be able to trust fully in our God. As I was preparing this summer to preach, I was stuck. I had no idea what I wanted to preach on. And 
I kept thinking about the different songs we were singing and then going back to what I was learning personally at the time, and I still had no idea what I wanted to preach on. So I did what any good team leader would do. I dumped the problem on my team. And so I asked all of them, if you could choose any single thing to communicate to all the churches that we're going to meet, every believer, every person, every church, what would that be? And amazingly, of six different people that I talked to, I got a variety of answers. But as I looked closer, I realized that every single one of my team was saying the exact same thing that they wanted to communicate to you. And that was simply that God is good. And I thought, wow, that's very unhelpful. Because there are so many different aspects of the goodness of God. How could I possibly talk about one way that God is good? But as I was studying, the Lord brought me to chapter, excuse me, Psalms chapter 138 and 139, and that's where we will be spending our time this evening. Psalms chapter 138 and 139. The goodness of God is something that we as believers can treat very flippantly. Oh, I got a paycheck this week. Isn't God good? Or, well, it was a terrible week, but God's still good. But what does that really mean to you? In these two chapters, David gives three distinct ways that God is personally good to each of you. Starting in chapter 138, verse number one, and we'll be reading through verse number three. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. In the day when I cried, thou answerest me and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. Lord, I ask the blessing on your word this evening, Lord, that you would give me the words to say and the way to say them. Lord, I ask that we would walk out of here closer to you and more focused on how good you are than when we walked in. I ask these in Jesus' name, amen. David, as I said, gives three distinct ways in these two chapters that God is personally, not theoretically, personally good to each of us. The first way that he shows here in verse number three is that God is good to us in that God hears us. David says, in the day when I cried, thou answerest me. God does not ignore your prayers. He answers you. Now, that word answer does, uh, does not mean here just to respond as we would usually use it today. That word answer in the Hebrew means, at its root, to heed or to pay attention. Now, there are many high schoolers in here. Uh, we're all in college in some way or another. And... I think we all know there are different levels of attention that you can give when a teacher is up in front of you. There's a baseline level of attention where the teacher's up in front of you doing their thing and you are in your seat doing your thing and you have no idea what's going on, nor do you care to know what's going on. That was me in college math. Some of you are math people. I thank the Lord for you. You can do my taxes. <laughs> Okay, But there's a second level of attention where you sort of kind of want to pass the class at least, and maybe it's moderately interesting to you. The teacher's a little bit more engaging. That was me in literature. I enjoy a literature to an extent, but it's not really my thing. But there's a third level of attention. <laughs> I'm about to expose myself as a massive nerd. 
I love music theory. Wow, I just got so many head shakes. It's so ridiculous. But I absolutely love it. I nerd out about it. It's so awesome. And whenever I have a teacher up in front of me talking about music theory, I am 100% attentive to what they have to say. The nerdier it gets, the more attention I give. I want to be there. I think it's awesome. It's great. 100% of my focus is on that teacher, and that is the kind of attention that God gives to us. He pays attention to what we have to say. Now, often, when we look at how God listens to us, we can mistakenly equate God's hearing of us with God's taking away the problem that we're asking him to deal with. But David says here that God, though the problem might not immediately go away, God does respond. He says, in the day when I cried, thou answerest me and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. That word strengthen does not mean to give a physical strength to deal with the problem. At the root, it means to embolden or to urge forward. You see, God is not passively aware of the requests that are coming in. God actively listens and actively responds to you by giving you the spiritual strength that you need to move forward in the trial that he has ordained for you to go through. God is first personally good to us in that God hears us. Secondly, we'll be dropping to chapter number 139, Starting in verse number one. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. We can take the fact that God hears us and still make it so impersonal. We talk. God listens. Sometimes he does what we ask. Sometimes he doesn't. But hey, I guess we'll get to heaven in the end. But there's a deeper truth here that David shows, which is that God's not personally, just personally good to you and that he hears you. God secondly is personally good to you in that God knows you. David says in verse number one that God has searched him and known him. As with God actively listening to you, actively paying attention to what you have to say, God actively knows who you are. Every single thing about you, God sees and God knows. In verse number two, David says, thou understandest my thought afar off. Verse number four, there is not a word in my tongue, but O Lord, thou knowest it. The thoughts that you have, the words that are in your mouth, even the ones you never spoke, God knows. But this idea doesn't stop at a simple knowledge of psychological facts or personal history or even our thoughts, as amazing as that is. See, the word here for search doesn't mean just to look. It means to explore, to examine, or investigate. See, God 
doesn't just have a table full of, of facts about Joel Montgomery laid out at a table that he just sifts through now and then to make sure he's caught up. God actively explores every depth of my soul. He knows every feeling, every emotion, every struggle, every sin that I have better than anyone ever will, including me. God first is personally good to you in that he, knows, he hears you, but secondly, he's personally good to you in that he knows you. Finally, starting in verse number seven, David says, whither shall I go from thy spirit or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. Even the fact that God knows us, along with God hearing us, can be so impersonal to us. God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. He has to know us, has to hear us. That's how that works. But we can forget that God doesn't just hear us, doesn't just know us. God is actively involved in what's going on. He first hears us and secondly knows us, but finally God is personally good to us in that God is with us. David rhetorically asks in verse number seven, where could I possibly go that you wouldn't be with me? He makes a couple of contrasts in verse number eight saying, if I ascend up into heaven, rising into the sky, or make my bed in hell, descending into the earth, Behold, thou art there. Another contrast in verse 9, if I take the wings of the morning, the idea of the pinnacle of the light, the sky, the morning, or dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there, verse 10, shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Now, why would he specifically point out being held by the right hand. Well, throughout the poetical books of scripture, the right hand is always used to signify a place of utmost importance. For example, we are commanded in Proverbs to keep wisdom at our right hand. If you have something in scripture, at your right hand, there is not a thing that is in any way more important than that thing in your right hand. And that is where God keeps us. There is not a single thing in this entire universe that is more important to God than the welfare and the relationship that he has with his own children. God is first good to you that he hears you, secondly, that he knows you, but finally, he is good in that he is with you. Now, these are three truths that many of us have heard since we were children. God's with you, God hears you, God knows you. But we see in these chapters how personal these truths are to God. So what's the personal reaction that we should have to these truths? Well, David gives the reaction in verse number 23. David says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Now, it's interesting that at the beginning of this chapter, David says, God, you've searched me and known me. And then at the end of the chapter says, God, search me and know me. At first glance, it seems redundant, but the middle of that verse, David says, try me and know my thoughts. That word try means to test. Now, why would 
David spend a whole chapter talking about the goodness of God and then at the very end ask for the testing of God? Well, in verse number 24, he says the reason, which is to see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You see, David has acknowledged that God has come all the way personally. God is very personally good. The only thing keeping us from a deeper, more intimate relationship with him is the wickedness of our own hearts. So what is the reaction to the truth that God hears us, knows us, and is with us? As David said, it is to open our hearts to the Lord and ask him to test our souls and to show us anything that is coming between us and a more deeper, deeper personal relationship that he wants to have with us. The team is going to come back at this time and we're going to sing a final prayer. This song asks that the Lord would fill us with his spirit and draw us close to him so that we can have that personal relationship with him. is full of light as the ocean swell with water and the mountains burst with heart overwhelm my soul with you lord like the waters of the sea give me jesus without measure that my heart Without measure, that my.